This book is amazing. I'm telling you, The Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Meyer, winning the battle in your mind has really inspired me for spiritual growth, for mental wealth and well-being, and also being able to understand how your mind operates. You need this book. For those of you who don't have it, grab your copy because I'm going to be speaking about it a lot in this video. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Esther NJ. I know it has been a while, but I just want to say thank you to each and every one of those who has reached out to me in one way or the other. In today's video, I'm going to be speaking about my new read on the battlefield of the mind by Joyce Meyer. I don't even know where to start with this book, but in a nutshell, I want to tell you so far, I am loving this. Now, one of the reasons why I talk about the battlefield of the mind, and if you've noticed it with the majority of my videos, I speak a lot about your mindset. Why is this? Because your mindset is very important and crucial to your personal development and your spiritual growth. Now, talking about the mind from a generic perspective, what thoughts are making you think on a higher level or is making you think on a mediocrity level or a low level? The one thing I want to remind you of is do not remain complacent, no matter where you are right now. And where you are right now is only for a season. But if you can renew your mind to believe for greater, greater will come. Yes, by words we speak the greatness, but then we act on the greatness. And how do we act on the greatness? By renewing our minds consistently. Now, when it comes to your mind, how do you see it? How do you feed it? How do you water it? What thoughts are coming into your mind that cause you to stay the way you are? Don't you want to see change in your life? mental change, spiritual change, financial change, social change, business change, corporate change. Change is good. Never be afraid of it when it comes. But I want to remind you, your mind can only take you further than where you want it to go. And how willing are you to be stretched? That's another thing that Joyce Meyer touches upon, is being stretched in decision making, being stretched when you've been given tasks to do when you're building a ministry, when you're in business, when you're with your family, when you're with your friends, how is your mind operating in those moments? And I really want to remind you that your mind can only take you further than where you want to go. It's not about how you treat others and not treat yourself well. One of the great ways you can know that you're operating from a healthy place is how you treat people. But the way you treat people reflects on how you treat yourself. And I'm going to tell you why. Number one, how you treat others is a reflection of how other people will treat you. It is so important that we treat everybody we know and those who we are yet to know with kindness because you don't know what tomorrow holds. You don't know who you need in this life. And this is a humble reminder for me as well. As much as I'm doing this video for you, I want to also refer it back to myself. Each and every one of us is a blessing. We need to be gifts onto others. And our gift onto others could be our pouring out to people who may have struggles with how they think. Their focus is more on the negatives than the positives. You being a positive person, you need to make sure that you are constantly feeding your audience with things that can uplift them. Now, for someone like myself, I'm genuinely a positive person. I'm not saying that I don't have my days, because indeed I do. We are all human. But the thing is that I'm able to cultivate and manage and discipline my thoughts if I know that they're not going to produce healthy outcomes. So it's really important that you remember that as you are around people, you are very mindful of the thoughts that come into your mind and you are very intentional about the words that you desire to say so that what is said will start to germinate in their lives. Remember, words are seeds. And when you speak those words of encouragement, change must start. And that includes whether they are positive words or negative words. Remember, before the mouth speaks, the mind has to start. Your thoughts cultivate what you are. Another point to consider is that your mind actually enables you to see from a visionary perspective. Now, I'm not saying that you should drop today and just zoom off into the future, no. <laughs> what I do believe is as you build each day as they come, you are building the vision for your life. 
Vision is very important, particularly for those who have really big plans to serve the masses and for the betterment of society and the community. Whether your vision is big or small, as long as it is benefiting other people than yourself, that vision will surely be prosperous. And that vision is going to inspire other people to do better in life. But with your mindset and you're thinking about the future and what you don't yet have, that can actually limit your vision. Just because you don't see certain things happening to you right now doesn't mean that the vision does not exist. And I want to remind you of this, that everything that you're building now starts with a seed in the ground. And that seed is so powerful that how you water it really indicates the outcome of that seed. And therefore, it eventually blossoms into a plant. Now think about the sun, think about soil, think about good soil, in fact, think about water. All these things are needed to create good ground for the seed to grow. Is it about investing in mental health for those who are at work? Is it to help those who are bereaved? Is it even to help those write a book and share their story? Is it for those who desire change in the working environment? All these attributes are seeds that start with the mind. When you think that something will not get better, it will not get better. But when you believe that it will get better and you give it time, you will see why it took so much time for it to blossom. Which leads me on to my third point, which is patience. Be patient with yourself, be kind to yourself. Be patient with yourself and be kind to yourself. Why do I say this? Because as you're building a positive mindset, as you're building a lifestyle of positivity and grace and love, you need to be reminded that your mindset is very vital to where you need to go. When you're not patient with yourself and you assume that everything is just going to work the way you want it to work without understanding that there are lessons to learn in the process, you will not see the beauty in the process because all you want to do is to get to the destination. And although the destination is nice, when you get there, there'll be another test for you to take. This is why your testing season is your greatest season of triumph and testimony. Don't ever underestimate the seasons that you are in. And one thing I want to remind you with, just as a bonus point, is any time that your mind starts to think negatively, see that as a strong sign that you are on the right path, that you are in the will of God for your life. Because there are moments where you might be thinking, I'm being attacked in my mind. I'm being attacked in my finances. I'm being attacked in my family, in my friendship, in my business, etc. All these attacks lead to greatness if you allow it to. We are all going through one circumstance or the other, but it shouldn't make that person stay where they are. It's the patience to understand why they are going through that situation and to ask, what can I learn from it? Rather than suppressing it and trying to hide it. Because anything you hide will eventually spring up. And when you don't have patience, it turns into anger. And we know that when people are angry and they don't have a positive mindset, it produces disruption and chaos. And nobody wants to be around anger. There are moments where you have to remember that if I sleep with this anger and I wake up the next day and carry this burden on my shoulder, it's not just going to affect those around you, but it's going to affect you as the individual. That's why when you are making decisions to talk, listen first. When it comes to decision making, you need to be very mindful of how you conduct yourself. Are you firm? Are you still? Are you humble? Are you in a place of solitude? Decision making should not be made in haste. When your mind is steaming ahead and wanting you to go further than where you already are, wait. Ask yourself, why do I need to steam ahead? Why do I need to force myself to be in a season that I am currently in to try and get out of it? What is it that I'm learning from my season right now that is causing me to be patient? Patience is teaching me humility. Patience is teaching me how to forgive. Patience is teaching me how to live better and how to love better. Patience is teaching me that I still need work to do. Patience is teaching me that before I get on that stage, I need to make sure that I can handle stage fright behind the scenes, even if it's with a group of four people. Now, before we ask for the greatness, we need to do the work behind the scenes. And that's why when you think about life, your life is abundantly progressing. 
because you are really maximizing the gradual steps of the journey. And those gradual steps of the journey are keeping you patient. They're keeping you grounded. So when the outcome arrives, you can say, it was good that I waited. It was good that my mindset didn't fall into self-pity. This book, Joyce Meyer, touches a lot about self-pity and why it's dangerous for you as an individual. Looking down on yourself, feeling sorry for yourself, acting as if no one likes you, all these things are not to be entertained at all. When you entertain these thoughts, it keeps you where you are. You're not able to learn. And if you're always one-sided, which is my fourth point, being one-sided doesn't cause you to have a blossoming mindset. In other words, having a fixed mindset keeps you in the same boat. But when you have a growth mindset or an asset mindset, you're able to think bigger beyond yourself. Growth is uncomfortable. Of course it is. But it gets you out of your comfort zone and it makes you realise that there's far more greater in you than you would ever expect. And this is not about being perfect. Perfectionism does not exist. We need to encourage lives that do exist and stop entertaining and trying to pretend to live lives that do not exist. We are living in a generation where we want to look perfect and I totally understand that. Perfect mindset, perfect life, perfect job, perfect life. But there are moments where life will really trigger us one way or the other. And it's really to keep us grounded and to remind ourselves, hold on, is my mind positive today? Am I entertaining the right thoughts? Or am I in the same position and I'm expecting change? Am I making that move to make an investment? Am I taking a leap of faith to believe that this project will succeed? Or am I doubting and looking and thinking it won't really go well because I did it five times before and it didn't work? You see how your mind can start to think negative straight away and then the self-pity comes in and that causes many people to really question why you're acting the way you act. And it only takes the grace to find someone that can understand you in your pain. Now, I'm not saying that everybody can handle you but what I am saying is that God is so gracious that he will put people and strategic people in your life to encourage you, to inspire you, to motivate you to keep going. This is not about trying to suppress how you feel. No, I'm not saying that your emotions are not important. They are. But wherever you are right now, don't entertain those thoughts and feelings by thinking that is your life. You are more than where you are. And I want to remind you of that because every battle starts in the mind, not just your words. It starts in the heart before it becomes a reality. And when you want to see change, you have to give time, give people time to change. Time is powerful and it is really important that you remember that so that when the opportunities come for you to change, you're not rushing, you're not stressing, you're not feeling like you're behind, your character is being built in the process of being changed. And that's what you want in this life. You want to see changes in your life. We all want to see changes. I really guarantee you that everybody listening to this video, this time last year or the year before, you are not where you are right now. And I can testify of that. I'm definitely not where I was two years ago today. And that's because I had to really make intentional decisions to renew my mind. And renewing your mind does not have to be so hard. It's just little steps that makes big changes in the future, gradually. And that could be taking rest or naps, reading books, speaking to someone, going to therapy, doing things that inspire you to come out of your comfort zone, be around like-minded people, speak to a trusted friend or a family member or someone that you can confide in. You're not meant to do this life on your own. And so many people are feeling lonely right now because they don't know where to turn. But I want to remind you that as you get this book, I want this book to inspire you and to really challenge you to work on your mind because that's where the battle starts. This book has really encouraged me. It's challenged me and it has shaped me to be the woman that I am today. And I love Joyce Meyer's transparency. Her honesty in this book will humble you. And for someone 
to reach out and share their story and talk about moments where it was really difficult, I honour that. Because in our generation today, if you talk about your pain, it seems weak, but it's not. Talking about what you go through in wisdom will set so many other people free. And that's what it's about. We're not meant to live a life where we are succumbed to our pain or our mental thought habits. Don't feel you need to stay the way you are. Speak out. Keep praying. Keep believing. Keep trusting God. The changes are coming, even if you don't see it right now. When I thought that my mindset was working against me, I realised that in the end, it was working for me and for my good. Take the time to share this video with somebody and get this book of The Battlefield of the Mind on Amazon. In the meantime, I look forward to hearing from you very soon. Take care. Bye.